Hi everyone, um, thank you for tuning in. I know there's a lot going on, but um, if anybody wants to hang out for a little Bible study, then um, uh, by all means, stay tuned in. Um, <coughs> by no means, I, I'm not an authority on this stuff. Um, I just want to plant some seeds and offer people food for thought on... Um, Going back in Genesis when Jacob was blessed and named Israel twice. And looking at those passages, um, from my perspective, um, uh, they clearly point to Jesus Christ. And um, so if anyone's interested in this little study, um, please stay tuned. And I think this stuff is important because I... Um, it really shows us where we come from, but I also, from my understanding, I think there's insight into our future as well in these scriptures. So there'll be there'll be links and everything is down below in the description box, including the scriptures. I'll put them in there. So um, basically, the foundation of where I come from, um, I'm not a I'm not a Bible scholar. Um, I just do the best I can with what I know and what I'm able to discern, um, as most people. But, um, the standard of my theology, um, is that we have to accept that the entire Bible is true in order to discern the truth. Um, and I don't think that's very arguable because that is just apparent and very evident now in these times. Um, but that is also the struggle in these times. We're trying to get people to see that. But, um, but that's where I come from. That we have to accept the entire Bible as true. Um, and we know the Bible interprets itself and proves itself. So if there are any discrepancies whatsoever, it can be determined through the Bible. And as far as other texts go, like the Apocrypha, maybe... Enoch or Second Estras or Second Baruch or whatever, um, those texts can be verified through the biblical canon. Um, we don't bring in anything outside of God's house, um, and the root is the Bible, and everything is proved through the standard biblical canon. Um, I'm not saying this because I say so. I'm saying this because I came from a very opposite, um, from the opposite. Um, I used to think the Bible was corrupt and blah, 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 but I did it in ignorance and whatever. Um, but that's generally where, where I come from. And um, I do think the Bible, our standard biblical canon, is um, divinely protected in this satanic world that we live in. And um, because we do see that these texts in our standard canon are generally superior to any other text that's out there, generally speaking. Even like 2nd Baruch or, or Enoch or 2nd um, Estras, etc. These, the texts within the Bible that we have seem to be superior. And uh, there's definitely a divine protection on this because there's no way we could live in a world run by Satan and not have a um, completely corrupted Bible. I mean, that's where I came from before. But, um, <clears throat> anyway. So, uh, in this study, I just want to look at the times where Jacob was called Israel twice. Now, I think all arrows point to Jesus Christ, and I'll, I'll make my small cases why. Yes, more in-depth studies can be done, and I encourage, and that's why I'm making this video to encourage people to maybe do more in-depth studies and look into this. Um, I don't have access, I don't have knowledge of biblical Hebrew and stuff like that, um, so I'm just going on strong concordances and King James translations and stuff like that. But still, the truth isn't that hard to discern, and um, and I, I and again I. I am also going on the knowledge that the entire Bible is true, so we are considering the New Testament things as well. And, 
you know, that just seems to be the case. That's the only way we can really discern the truth. But those are the times we're living in. We're trying to get to that place. We're trying to inspire people to get to that place. So, um, so Jacob was first called Israel in Genesis 32, 24 through 32. And I think this is the first mention of Israel in the Bible. Um, now the name Israel, what it means is to strive with God, to try to prevail against God. Like exactly what Jacob did with this angel um, in Genesis 32. Now according to the King James translation and the Strong's, I don't have the word angel. I have the word man. And, um, and as we go forth in this text, and even in Genesis 35, um, I just want to point out why I think all arrows point to Jesus Christ. As Jesus himself said, Moses wrote of me. And, um, but there's very interesting things. Now, I know this particular passage in Genesis 32, 24 to 32, is a very difficult thing to decipher. And many commentaries are written about this and, art and debates and stuff like that. But I think in these times that we have the truth, the latter-day truth, where we can accept the Bible as a whole and begin to see these prophecies unfold in our eyes and stuff like that, we can discern the truth. We, it, the truth is accessible. And this is a really, obviously, really important scripture to um, study. So, let's take a look at it. So, Genesis 32, starting at verse 24. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. Okay, now, the breaking of the day is important here. And no, I don't have the answers, but it's something to meditate on, and we'll find that, and we'll find that out um, down below uh, in the latter verses at the closing verses of this section. Verse twenty-five. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint, and he wrestled with him. Now, I know from my studies of earlier in Genesis, studying Abraham and stuff, um, the touching of a thigh, it seems a little weird to us, It's because it's supposed to be kind of intimate, um, back in those days was a means of a covenant, of making a covenant, and we see that evident with, um, with Abraham, I forget exactly where, so <clears throat> clearly a covenant is being ma made with Jacob and this man. But we'll get into that uh, later, a little bit later. And he said, let me go for the, you know, the angel said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I, and Jacob said, I will not let you go except you bless me. So th there is a high significance of the day breaking, the sun coming up. And I don't have the answers to that, but we can only guess and meditate on it. Definitely considering the latter day times, and I'll get into that. And he said unto him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. And the man said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince thou thou for as a prince has thou power with God and with men, and has prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee thy name. And he said, Why Why are you asking me my name? And he blessed him there. So that that's very significant as well. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, which means I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. And finally, the closing passage, oh, and we'll close out the passages. And as he passed over Peniel, Peniel, excuse me if I'm not pronouncing that right, the sun rose upon him, and he halted upon his thigh. Therefore the children of Israel eat not of the sinew which shrank, which is upon the hollow of the thigh, unto this day, because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh in the sinew that shrank. Okay, so looking at this excerpt, these scriptures, clearly trying to figure out what this means, the breaking of the day, the sun coming up, 
has a significant rel relevance. Again, I don't have the exact answer to that, but it's something to meditate on and something that really must be taken in consideration if we really want to understand what these scriptures are telling us. Now, we know that Jacob, this man, okay, um, decided to name Jacob Israel. And the name Israel means to prevail with God, to wrestle with God and prevail, which is exactly is happening in these scriptures. So this is clearly a metaphor of the children of Israel's future with the land of Israel. It clearly is. And, you know, it's not like it's not like what the world sells us today that, you know, everything is fine and dandy. No, we, we are called to pray for and support the land of Israel, but we do not support the satanic world um, governments playing chess with this piece of land and, and all that stuff going on. Um, we are not called to support anything ungodly. Um, and, and that's kind of the wake-up call. And... Actually, in Jeremiah, we are told when we learn, you know, going back to Jan Daniel and Jeremiah and the prophecy of the 70 years, which everyone was looking at, we learn in Jeremiah that when Israel became a nation, it, it became a nation with the knowing it was going to serve the king of Babylon. So it was going to serve Satan when it became a nation. Okay? And that's what the Bible tells us. So... So with the, with all this understanding, we could under we could begin to discern how um, the name Israel is striving with God, um, wrestling with God, and prevailing, because we are wrestling with God. the The people of Israel are wrestling with God because we have a rejected Messiah. Um, Jesus Christ is not recognized as the Messiah of two thousand years ago, and we are just we don't have the truth yet and as it's clear if you see just like Jesus himself said that Moses wrote of me um, we know that Jesus is all over Genesis and he was the word um, made flesh that dwelt among us and Jesus starting in Genesis 1 Jesus was uh, God made us in his image and um, Jesus is the image of God. The, and yes, it's idolatry and all that kind of stuff. But so so with that be said, um, this angel or this man, which is clearly all arrows point that this is Jesus Christ um, he is making Jacob a prince so this is like a priestly blessing which is very interesting and he has prevailed because because there's a lot of questions why was Jacob named Israel twice as we see in Genesis 35 um, but I want to show people's attention that the name Peniel, if I'm not pronouncing that properly, for Jacob said, I have seen God face to face and my life was preserved. Okay, I think it's a big misconception and a kind of lazy interpretation as probably most non-believers in Jesus will perceive that text as I saw an angel of God and I saw a God and it's kind of like the same thing, uh, this loose metaphor. No, 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 no. Um, I think um, we should be a little more specific. That he was face to face with an angel, more specifically in the scriptures, described as a man. And he named the place, I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. I mean, I'm sorry, all arrows are pointing to Jesus, the image of God, who we know Jesus was the foundation of creation. Okay. Um... Now this is when it gets really interesting. Um, now Jesus' um, Jacob's thigh was dislocated. 
So that means the covenant. So there's going to be some kind of broken covenant. And we know throughout the prophecies and stuff, it's not like the Israelites in Israel are, are like have been tight throughout history. No, there's falling aways, there's there's problems, there's issues which are still going on in these latter day times. And I think this is a big metaphor for the huge, all the way up until I guess the setting of the millennial reign when Christ is finally established and undeniable as the truth and um, and the millennial reign. This is what this is why I think Jacob's thigh was dislocated. That the covenant is, is dislocated and is wounded. More specifically, the sinew, which is like the vein. So, you know, I don't have the answers, but this is something to meditate on. As the scriptures say, And as he passed, and after this occurrence, Jacob passed over the land of, this land of Peniel, the sun rose upon him, and he limped upon his thigh. I think the word Passover is the same as, I think we could think of that as, uh, the biblical Passover and how that um, I'm sorry I'm really hard to follow that's the witchcraft so please excuse me I have to regather my thoughts every 10 seconds um, anyway when we read in verse 31 as he passed over P Peniel the sun rose upon him those are the same words as the biblical Passover and we're gonna we're expecting that Passover to take place Right now in these times, the wrath of God and those who have the blood of Christ on their doorposts, the seal on their forehead, um, are not called to God's wrath. And I think this is a metaphor of that. And Jacob passed over Peniel, and the sun rose upon him, and he limped upon his thigh. It's very interesting. So, I don't know. It's just definitely something to meditate on but moving on in chapter 35 we see the second time of Jacob being called Israel and being blessed so I'll read and God appeared unto Jacob again when he came out of Padanaram and blessed him God said unto him thy name is Jacob the name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. So there's a second blessing. It's very peculiar. And, um, and God said unto him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee. And kings shall come out of thy loins. So the first blessing in uh, chapter 32 is of a priestly bl blessing and this seems to be a more of of the nations of a more you know I mean we see this in Abraham as well this is God repeats the same blessing to Abraham as well so there's something to this but the point I really want to point out to people like why we see God as Jesus as a man as Jesus you know we have the Father and the Son, right, is towards the end here. I'll just get to the punchline because this is just falling in the shambles. I'm sorry. I do the best I can. Um, at verse 14 in chapter 35, I think this is where we really get um, that Jacob was given the revelation of, of Messiah that... Um, God being that man is in God's image. That's the best way to put it. So verse 14, And Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he talked with him, even a pillar of stone. And he poured a drink offering thereon, and he poured oil thereon. So we have a drink offering and oil. Now the drink offering... Um, if we do a study on drink offering, that generally has to do with wine, and we know it's kind of like uh, the fruits of a person. 
I can't describe we what exactly wine means, but um, it's our fruits being transformed. You know, the word of God, the water being turned into wine, um, into a drink offering. Uh, Paul referenced himself as a drink offering as his ministry was failing or ending in the Philippians, in the book of Philippians. Um, but it's ironic when we look at the Strong's, um, drink offering me also means a molten image. So that's very interesting. So we're not just talking about a drink. I think that's a reference to the image of God, to man being the image of God and God being having defined as a man, having a relationship or having to do with a man, though he is the omnipresent God, but there is a man in his image, you know, as Jesus Christ. So I think that drink offering that um, Jacob poured on this altar, again, it, all arrows point to the revelation of Jesus Christ. So, um, I just wanted to point that out, and uh, I'll close this up now. I'm sorry, I'm really hard to follow. I do the best I can. Um, it's all in the grace of God. Um, but it's just something to meditate on. And I hope I gave everybody something to meditate on. God bless. Peace out.